content for the first time, and I would like to do this more on a regular basis. Uh, I've got a Stephen on Facebook Live as well. And uh, so you we can get on Facebook. We are, we are really branching out here, man. We, we do what we can. Uh, we are not on YouTube Live right now. I typically like to look these over and uh, divide these into segments. So please, if you love college football, if you're watching right now on Facebook, if you love college football, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is uh, college football 24-7, 365 for the smart fan. All right, let's talk recruiting. And of course, this Alabama class, in terms of the rankings, may be a little bit of a disappointment compared to what we've seen in winning the recruiting championship of sorts. The unofficial title is number one recruiting team in the rankings for a zillion years in a row. Uh, it's still a top five class and could be much improved that first Wednesday of February, kind of the second signing day. So there's a, a guy in particular looking at the 2019 class that's been lost recently. So just kind of size up where we are with Alabama's 2018 and 19 classes, Stephen. For 2018, this group has a chance to finish with the number two class. I've gotten a chance to talk to a lot of people in the recruiting arena. This class has a chance to finish very strong for Alabama. Crimson Tide right now looking at three wide receivers. Uh, Justin Ross out of Phoenix City, Alabama, who's been high on Crimson, Auburn, and the Crimson Tide. But Ross has developed a very close relationship with Michael Knoxley, the offensive coordinator. So Alabama in play there. Also, Jalen Waddell, a five-star, very, very explosive young man, can jump out of a gym uh, with that vertical leap. Uh, Alabama looking at him. He was at the National Championship Parade in Tuscaloosa back on January 20th. I mean, also Jacob Copeland out of Florida, who can play either wide receiver or defensive back. But the thing with Jacob Copeland he also has a strong relationship with Jeremy Pruitt, who is right now the head coach for the Tennessee Volunteers. So trying to wrestle away Copeland from Jeremy Pruitt, that would be a hassle. But right now the Crimson Tide looking at Jalen uh, Waddle, Justin Ross, and Jacob Copeland at wide receiver. Where defensive backs are concerned, Alabama wants to get Patrick Sertan. And uh, LSU has been high on him, but – it appears as if their hold on Sertan not as high as many people thought it would be or thought it was. So Alabama would like to get Patrick Sertan. Also, Isaac Taylor Stewart, which is a, who's about six foot three, very rangy corner, kind of has that body of a Richard Sherman of the Seattle Seahawks. So Isaac Taylor Stewart. Also, there's a third guy in play whose last name is Coleman. First name kind of slipping me a bit, but last name Coleman. Those three guys, Coleman, Sertan, and Isaac Taylor Stewart for that defensive backfield due to Alabama losing six DBs to the NFL draft. We all know the Minka Fitzpatrick, Ronnie Harrison, uh, Tony Brown, and Levi Wallace, Anthony Averett, and Hootie Jones. Uh, the guys Alabama has already signed in the early signing period, Savion Smith, the JUCO, also, Josh, uh, Josh Job and Jalen Armour Davis. So three guys already in Alabama trying to land three more to equal out the six that's being lost to the NFL and also three more wide receivers. That for the 2018 class. For 2019, the number three offensive guard, DeVee Hammond, the number three offensive guard out of Rivals.com, has decommitted. I'm not sure the reason behind his decommitment could be a family situation, could be trying to really weigh his options. Once again, he has another full year before truly making that decision. And a lot of these kids, when they initially uh, commit Mark, they do it off the spur of the moment. They do it on, I really think this, this school has what I'm looking for. But then as you take some official visits and you go elsewhere, and you search different places, you think, wow, you know, this may actually be a good spot for me. Maybe that may be a good spot for me. So, then you really start to get the wheels of the brain turning and you start to actually see what other places are out there. And that could be what Hammond's thinking. But right now, the 2019 uh, offensive lineman has decommitted for the Crimson, from the Crimson Tide as of right now. So I released a video a few days ago uh, featuring Patrick Sertain and his story and his eligibility and his availability to all the schools out there. Sertain is the number one rated cornerback in high school football out of Plantation, Florida at American Heritage High School. And some of the 
uh, just superlatives are mind blowing, mind numbing. So consider this, Stephen. Think about it, and everybody listening and watching. Think about the best athlete, the best football player that was in high school at the time that you were there, or maybe in the history of your high school. Think about who were the best athletes that we produced for college and maybe the NFL and beyond. Okay. Patrick Sertain is the number one rated cornerback in the country. He is playing opposite Tyson Campbell, who's the number two rated cornerback in the country at the same high school, the two top cornerbacks in the same high school, maybe a reason why this team has won 27 consecutive games and two straight state championships. And Patrick Sertain's coach is Patrick Sertain Sr., who was a tremendous cornerback at Southern Miss and an all-pro with the Miami Dolphins. It's unreal. You got Campbell, Sertain, and Bama wants both of those guys. And it, it's, it's like... That defense in high school is almost like the Arizona Cardinals defense where you've got Tyron Matthew and Patrick Peterson. Or in Seattle where you have a healthy Richard Sherman, a healthy Earl Thomas, and a healthy Cam Chancellor. It's like, how do we throw on these guys? How do we challenge these guys up and down the field with the play at wide receiver and quarterback? So Campbell and Sertain, two guys Alabama wants. It's going to be very interesting how the Tide wrap up this 2018 class because it right now it's at five or six, but it's got a chance to end up at number two before it's all said and done. It's got a real chance. And it starts with, you know, getting the rest of these loose ends tidied up. And that's probably one of the reasons why Nick Saban chose to have all of his turnover on this coaching staff is he wants the guys that can speak the language of these athletes right now with social media at an all time high, everybody on Twitter, everybody on Instagram, everybody on, on Facebook and other forms of social media, Nick Saban wants these guys or the type of coaches that can interact with these kids on those platforms, speak that language as well as go out there, coach them up, recruit them, put them in situations to be successful this is the reason why that next year staff or the staff that's in right now will be the youngest staff in Saban's tenure. Every, every last one of these coaches, with the exception of Loxley, who got the promotion, and Dan Enos, is 35 years old and younger. 